Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome on this webinar, uh, Think the Unthinkable by Eblida. Uh, my name is Tom van Vlimmeren, and I'm president of Eblida and also your host today. So um, before we start with the workshop, I'd like to uh, have your attention for the fact that this webinar will be recorded and also uh, that the slides and the recording will be shared afterwards with you so you can see things back if you want to. And we invite you to please ask your questions and as you are not able to speak in this uh, uh, workshop, we ask you to ask your questions uh, in the chat. So don't forget to do that. And um, I'm happy we are with uh, 20 plus people here. So uh, I think this is a wonderful basis for a fruitful afternoon. So this is me. And this will be your speakers of today. Um, in the program, um, I will uh, do the introduction part and then Jean-Marie Redding, who is not only the Ablida treasurer, but also uh, he's coming from Luxembourg and representing there the Library Association. Um, and he will speak on the post-COVID agenda and what that means, we will learn from him afterwards. Then I'll come back to you on the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals and what that means for libraries and the work that Eblida has been doing on that. And then Giuseppe Vicello, um, he's our Eblida director. He will take us uh, to the European Structural Investment Funds um, to uh, share with you what opportunities we see for you in, uh, in that. So here again is the, the program uh, of today. And after each speaker, there is questions and answers. So please ask your questions by the chat. And in the end, I'll come back to you and draw some conclusions. Now we move um, onwards to the introduction. And let me start by saying that I'm very glad that within these um, webinars we do this week, this is the third one, we had many attendees from many libraries and uh, I'm glad you all uh, are with us. Uh, I hope you are uh, in good health and that your families and your staff members, your colleagues are not hit by COVID either. Um, if we look back, we can say that the libraries in Europe have reacted in different ways to the COVID crisis, uh, but uh, as, a, as a kind of uh, rule, all libraries have shown great creativity and flexibility in the crisis. And I think that is something that uh, is connected to the passion of librarians uh, who want to deliver their services to the community and that passion seeks its way in creativity and flexibility. But I think all libraries deserve a wonderful compliment for doing that. That's really something special and really something good in, in our library sector. Um, an early report of Eblida deals with the way uh, libraries uh, are, were dealing with the, with the crisis, so we could learn from one another. And that is, uh, I think, one of the examples how Eblida tries to be uh, a platform for exchange of practices among libraries in, uh, in Europe. Uh, what we couldn't do during the lockdown um, and during the new normal is organize debates and conversations and discussions in our libraries. We could open up for book circulation. And if you look at it, most libraries are doing quite okay with that. Although I hear from different parts of Europe that the numbers are still lower than they used to be 
before the crisis. Um, we have, of course, a problem with uh, our study and reading spaces as distancing is a rule and we had to take out a lot of, uh, of seats. Um, we also see that the libraries are limited in their program possibility, the courses uh, for um, illiterate people, for digital skills, for digital citizenship, um, lectures, uh, author readings, etc. We are limited in the possibilities to do that. And also, as I mentioned, in discussing what this crisis brings in the, in the world. And there are so many questions connected to COVID, like the reinforced role of the state at the one hand side, and people feeling limited in, in their freedom and in their privacy by that. Um, the, the healthcare system we have and how it is coping with this crisis, but also health ethics, like which patient, patients comes first uh, when it comes to healthcare the way we produce food and how sustainable that is. That's all themes that could be discussed in libraries in normal days. And I hope we will do that after this crisis has gone down a bit. Um, that is not happening now. What we see in most countries is a curve like this. COVID is still on its way. Um, in many countries, uh, in the last two, two weeks, the measures have been tightened and the more strict, and probably there will be even more of that. So um, we, we are not done with it. Uh, and I think there is a new challenge for libraries also, because we now see that staff, as the flu season in Europe is, get, is starting, and people are catching a cold, they have complaints, they have to stay at home in quarantine, and also they have to wait for tests and test results. So staffing in libraries is getting a problem, and some libraries already closed uh, because of that. Um, what happens um, in Europe, we will keep you posted, we will keep you informed of, from what we learn from different countries. And we do that by uh, our uh, Eblida newsletter. Um, we communicate by that. And we had some wonderful special issues of the newsletter. Uh, so we uh, speeded up our communication to you uh, so you would be well informed. But being informed is only one aspect. Uh, being aligned and being aware of what the direction of Iblida might be and having interaction and discussion on that, that is something else. So I hope that in your questions today, we can interact and discuss a bit of the direction we are going. Um, We were, of course, confronted as a Blida with um, the impossibility to have big meetings. Our annual council meeting was scheduled uh, for uh, uh, June. And uh, well, we had to postpone it. And in the end, we had to decide to make it um, a, a, a digital meeting, uh, an online meeting. So I invite all of you to attend uh, our 28th Eblida annual council meeting on October 28th. That's an, uh, uh, not on purpose, that's uh, by accident, that's it's both 28. Um, and uh, I hope that by having this round of workshops, we can discuss the content of uh, um, important topics already uh, more in detail with a large group of people and then uh, we can deal with the decision-making process in the annual uh, council. Um, and maybe um, it's, uh, it, it is uh, not only uh, a disadvantage that we all have to work with Zoom or team or uh, um, uh, sessions like we have now um, online because 
Um, our um, executive committee of Oblida is now uh, meeting more frequently than we did when we uh, had person-to-person uh, -person meetings. And I also hope that for the annual council, those who wouldn't normally be able to travel because of time or costs will be able to attend. So that could be an advantage in a difficult situation. Now, before I turn to the, the content of the program of today, I like to remind you that um, these are important topics, SDGs, the funding of activities, uh, and uh, how we deal with it in a post-COVID society. But Iblida is also still working on important topics like copyright and library legislation. So that works, work continues uh, as well. Um, before I go to, um, to, to that program, I want to start with the title of this workshop. It's Think the Unthinkable. And it's an invitation to think outside uh, the box. Uh, it's an appeal to say, what if this could happen? And as we know, the best way to predict the future is to create it. So we can do this. We are um, can deal with that. So we should not ask, or at least not only ask, what the future might bring and be, but we should all also create it by imagining it, by imagining what we want to do, and then go for it. Uh, we are librarians, after all. We have this passion, and we have a mission, and we. Uh, can resolve that. I mentioned earlier that the libraries were very creative and uh, uh, flexible in dealing with the COVID crisis. And I hope we can keep this up um, after the crisis has gone or when it goes down and see what the good things are that this crisis has brought us and to keep them, to preserve them, and also um, to see what we need to do more or uh, better. Um, and we have to adjust ourselves to this new situ situation and keep on working on a better informed and more democratic society based on the competent and well-informed citizens. That is our mission, our goal. And um, how we do this, this post-COVID agenda, Jean-Marie Redding will tell you more about that. Um, inevitably, um, SDGs um, are on the agenda and uh, they are not something um, you could think about or not. Now they are connected to the core values of the libraries. Um, to mention a few, equal opportunities for all, no discrimination of any kind, lifelong learning. These are really goals at the core of the library. Um, some people might think that I'm saying that librarians should become activists, and I don't think so. Uh, but I strongly believe in the value of libraries welcoming uh, people of every kind of walk without any discrimination. And um, I uh, do also believe that libraries should continue providing uh, true information that is as a trusted beacon of information, uh, information that is fact-checked. And that is why uh, Eblida cooperates with NewsGuard to be working on that side. And I also uh, believe that we, um, well, we make choices every day. Um, so we are not neutral. If we have opening hours only during daytime, we make a choice to exclude working people who cannot come to the library then. If we make a choice to deliver programs or lectures on the Black Lives Matters movement, or if we make the choice not to do that, that is also taking a stand. 
So I believe that we are uh, there to provide information, to empower our citizens so they can um, have their opinion about it. Um, and um, that is something different than the library becoming a political agent. Um, so we are not only allowed to work on the uh, sustainable development goals, but we should do it. And um, that is where um, uh, Giuseppe Vicello will, sorry, that is where I will uh, talk with you a bit further on later. Then, of course, it always turns out uh, we talk about money, uh, how we are going to pay for what we want to do. Um, and um, we know that the economy in European countries is heavily hit by the COVID crisis. Some uh, countries say it's minus 8% and other countries are saying 30%, 15% or even more. So many libraries fear that there will be a new round of budget cuts. And um, we need to show the impact of what we do as libraries. That's another theme. How can we demonstrate what we deliver in society? But um, at the same time, we might have to look uh, if there are other possibilities. And um, we made an inventory as a bleeder of the possibilities of, of tapping off some money from the European structural funds. And Giuseppe Vicello is going to explain the possibilities to you. So for now, I finish this introduction. Uh, I am very happy that you all are with us. Uh, I wish all of us a fruitful meeting. After all, that is the only way to spend your Friday afternoon. And do not forget to ask your questions in the chat. And um, I will now hand over to Jean-Marie Redding, who will discuss with us the post-COVID agenda. Thank you, Tom. Welcome everybody to the European Library agenda for the post-COVID-19 age. Uh, you remember in April 2020, EBLIDA launched a survey. We had uh, 17 countries which responded. And on that basis, we published the report, Think the Unthinkable. I don't want today to uh, talk what every country did. You will find all examples on our website and our publications in the chapter Iblida and, the, and COVID-19. There you have all the newsletters, all the country reports. Uh, you can read them as you, when you want. From, we identified five new normals uh, during this crisis. The first one is the exponential social distancing. Uh, well connected to meter library. I don't know how they do it in rural libraries, but it's, I think, a bit uh, problematic there. And uh, this crisis is also sort of health and access crisis. And some of uh, libraries also made first experience with home delivery or produced uh, face masks. And uh, as you see on this uh, picture, uh, fortunately, we didn't have any war in Europe for uh, 75 years. So uh, we don't try for the moment to produce any gas masks. The second one, technologies are mutating and ch uh, shaping libraries in new ways. Uh, I remember that some of our users said you don't have enough ebooks or your offer is not good enough. Why don't you have uh, uh, so, uh, less children books? So with this crisis, we had yeah different demands, and we also fa uh, we're facing, of course, the digital gap because we saw that people uh, users, which are not so fortunate, had problems with digital media. Third, 
uncharted economic territory, the library budgets, the cuts which could come. Uh, in Luxembourg, we have a lot of bankers, so they say uh, we have a small economic crisis every seven years on average, and a big one every 20 years. Well, the last one was uh, 2008, so it's, uh, it was only 12 years ago when we had, and this one I think is a big one again, and we have to pay attention, and we have to see what we, where we can find the money. The fourth normal, fourth normal, normal is the library governance and central and local levels. Uh, here's a, a scene of the film Storm Center, where the city librarian, the female one, is facing alone all the male ones of the city council. Uh, what I want to say is, librarians, we are not alone. We had uh, new partners. We had the Ministry of, not of Culture, we had the Ministry of Health dealing with us also a, a new partner. We had uh, the role of the library associations. They are very important. And even Iblida uh, posted in the April newsletter uh, recommendations how to deal with the virus. So, uh, and some of you, of course, also the, there was some grassroots uh, movement. So single librarians which had uh, just experimented with new ideas uh, on governance uh, level. And then don't forget the climate change opportunity and threat. Uh, you don't need to adopt a polar bear or uh, you can perhaps like the New York Public Library, uh, yeah, <clears throat> sell uh, Rita Thunberg uh, books, make her a little more richer, I don't know. And uh, But I think we have also other possibilities than uh, selling books or, or, or borrowing books, lending books. So uh, please uh, remember that you have to think global and act local. So don't forget that your library is also a part of this climate change. Then we had, we worked out 15 recommendations. The first one is the social X. I don't read now everything on this. So but you you can because you can also read this in our uh, reports so we have as you see uh, some influence on the uh, library at, at architecture because we are uh, we have no new uh, flows of in, uh, uh, users we have uh, spread more health information than before and the right one not the fake ones and uh, of course also we had to count the vulnerable, the elderly, and left behind. And regarding the elderly, this is not from Europe. It's uh, an information from Australia. But what's interesting about this information here, uh, where the Melbourne li Regional Libraries just telephoned over 8,000 people over the age of 70. What's interesting about this news is I found this in an article for museums. So this is an information which made museums jealous. So that's why it's I, I put it there because I found I just found it very interesting. Then we have the technology technological X, sorry. And I will not also read this one. But you see, uh, it's a lot of copyright, e-copies, e-everything, uh, digital divide, of course, uh, partnerships with educational establishments, schools, the problems with uh, online animation, of course. So you can also read this in our reports in detail. And around this technological X, I found here, it's a vision of the year 1990, Nine from a Futurama animated TV series. And uh, the people on the left are visiting a university library on planet Mars in the year 2636. And the main character, Fry, enters in a hall and there's only one box 
with two discs in it. And they say the largest library collections in the Western universe on only two discs. Very interesting. But I, I, I don't know if we will head in this direction in the future. And then we have the third one. The third X is the governance X. This is important because we know that we have to do a lot of lobbying to find additional budgets or to keep our budgets. We know that we have to think about SDGs, also to find money. And we will have to look for other funds uh, than the normal ones and where Giuseppe will talk about afterwards. And as an example from for a European fund, fund investment, this is the buy bus, the buy like ring group bus, electric bus, initiative of the city of Saarbrücken with German and French books for children and a supply of uh, 40 primary schools in France and Germany. And this one, it started in 2020, uh, was financed by Interreg, which is also a European fund. And tomorrow there will be in South Tyrol, in Bolzano, in Bozen, there will be uh, the start of My Argo, which is a union catalog, which is also founded by a regional European fund. So that's where you can find some money. Just to remember, what I told you, what you have read here, it's all in our reports. You have a full version, a short version, and a summary version. And you feel them, can find them on eblida.org on publications. Very easy to find. I wanted to have two examples for thinking inside or outside the box. And this one is from a very sympathetic, unfortunately, uh, he died 10 years ago, only aged in, at the age of uh, 59. And it was the IFLA Congress in Milan, and there was a podium dis discussion, and called IFLA and the Economic Crisis. Aha, that was the one of 2008. And someone of the, someone of the public, okay, it was me, I have to admit, uh, ask a question, do you have any tip how to deal with the next crisis plural? And this brilliant man, Bob McKee, CEO of Silip, he just said in one sentence, focus on core business. So you can now ask, of course, what's your core business of your type of library? Because I think it's different if you work in a university library or a small and rural library. And then don't be shocked. I have something outside the box. <clears throat> yes, it's a commercial global player. We are not commercial. This one is a commercial one. If you don't look, uh, don't like the caramel uh, macchiato venti and the yummy cheesecake, um, sorry for that. But what's interesting, Starbucks has also the same concept with a third place. And in July, they had an interview with the CEO of Starbucks, and that's what he said, how to deal with the crisis. So he said, well, we had some, gained some experience. That's the same for librarians. So we have some experience now. We are prepared for the next ones. We have to build a sense of trust with customers. Well, libraries are also trusty. We have to create safe environments. Okay, that's also possible in libraries. We have to continue to offer positive emotions. So that means think twice when you shout quiet in the library, positive emotions. And don't give up the third place, but offer more services, digital and analog ones. And even for the climate, they, uh, Starbucks uh, is planning to open more stores in urban areas for pedestrians. I think our users are also a lot of uh, also part of this group. So that's what I call as an example of thinking outside the box. So that was always that was the end of my presentation. I just have put one photo picture 
of the library bar in Copenhagen. When you are in Copenhagen, please go to the central station and the hotel next to this one, they have a library bar. And remember, because also bars and pubs had to close during COVID-19. So um, this, for, is the, the picture, this picture is, for example, is a, a mixture of a library and bar. You can tell, but it's not true because all these books are behind um, uh, some, uh, yeah, they are imprisoned. You cannot touch them, unfortunately. So that's the end of my presentation. Thank you for listening. Well, thank you, Jean-Marie, for your, um, your contribution. And, um, uh, well, I hope there would be a lot of questions for you, but I don't see any in the chat yet. So let's wait a bit and hope that people forgot to do it, but now they think, oh, I would like to know this or that. Please don't be shy. And... Um, Jean-Marie is there to answer your questions. And uh, remember, uh, folks, the presentation will be online for you. You can, afterwards, after the workshop, you can use them and look at them, read them again if you have missed something. Okay. Jean-Marie, if no one is asking a question, it's always the chair that has the privilege to do so. So... <laughs> What, in your opinion, have libraries changed in their actions that they will keep on doing in the in the near future? So what will stay? What has changed that will stay? Well, what will stay is we will st still uh, lending media, books. We will do it. Has that changed? Uh, hmm? Sorry. Has that changed to do during the crisis, you think? Uh, no, uh, because, uh, well, in my library, we had, of course, a bigger demand for digital books, uh -huh. because that's normal in these times. And uh, I remember that uh, uh, people were uh, telling, Yo, you, why don't you have more children books? And so on. But we are, I'm working in a national library. That's not the, the kind of question uh, for this uh, library. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, I think if we are going back to normal, uh, I think our core business will not change a lot. But, uh, well, we, we will perhaps... Um, yes. Okay. Maybe, maybe I, 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 I like to differ with you a bit on that. As a director of a public library, I would say... We, we have seen a bigger demand for ebooks, and we are more aware that than ever, we, because we were already, that we need to provide them. Also, we um, uh, see that many libraries create a kind of digital uh, library branch where uh, um, uh, the, the, the patrons, the citizens, can find more digital uh, uh, information. And that's also because libraries go more hybrid in their uh, programming. Mm -hmm. So they stream and they record and keep these recordings and like we do today. So I, I, I'm thinking that might be something that has changed during the crisis and that might stay. And maybe we will see one another next year online as well, because I think librarians will travel less and have <laughs> less conferences and more online meetings, I guess. Um, okay, well, um, I see that Elisabeth Rundqvist uh, addresses our attention to a uh, uh, website. Um, I don't see questions yet, so, so I thank Jean-Marie and um, we move on with uh, the, the next step and that is on the SDGs. And I'm the lucky one to, um, to do that with you. I see that uh, one question is coming in uh, ah, from the okay. You can read it if you want. Yeah, the question is, do we need a European legislation about e-books? Publishers don't take the European court serious. Well, 
um, it would be it would be helpful if we would have more um, um, consensus about uh, what the direction on uh, e-lending uh, needs to be. Blida is working on that, and of course, we try to create more um, uh, common ground on that. But it's not uh, within our uh, possibilities to do that in every country or in at the European level. We lobby for that, of course, and I think there is still a lot to be gained uh, in in that area because there is some court ruling but it's not answering all the questions there were. So we still have to move a bit more ahead, I would say. Jean-Marie, you are the expert. You are close to the Luxembourg <laughs> court. I'm very close. and uh, But I think we, ha we had uh, a, a made a big step now on the European level. And uh, I know that my MEPs cannot... Um, listen listen to the word copyright anymore for some uh <clears throat> for some time and uh, but of course we have we will still have legislation has to be updated it's normal yeah okay, okay. um and then elizabeth says um the report she draws our attention to shows that the already advantaged families are using the ebooks more than the social economic deprived uh, families. Uh, so uh, there is a more uh, inequality uh, created by the crisis. And that's something we learned. Yes, indeed. Yes. Okay. So thank you, Jean Marie. We move on. Mm -hmm. And um, let's, let's turn back the clock uh, a couple of years. And if we were in a room, I would ask you to raise hands and show who of us, who of you were, let's say, three years ago working on SDGs and found that an important topic. And I think that would not would not be all of us. So the good news is there is more um, uh, interest and more uh, need for working on the sustainable uh, development goals. And the other side of that good news is that um, the reason it gets more attention is that the climate change is much quicker and much stronger than most of us anticipated three years ago. So we see uh, uh, icebergs melting, sea level rising, storms, all kinds of uh, 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 a natural disaster, uh, fires burning uh, whole areas. It's really an, um, uh, an, 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 uh, an, an emergency time, you could say. So um, at the same time, this natural disaster creates also effects in the structure of our societies. Uh, um, it's uh, economic, it's social, um, and um, people are uh, affected by uh, by that. Um, now, um, if if we look at the uh, sustainable development goals, um, we might think, where do they come from? We know they come from the United Nations, but maybe we should give a bit of background to them. And I like to share with you a short video where uh, Ambassador Stefanilia, he is uh, an Italian who is connected to the United Nations, explains where this uh, comes from. The SDGs find their roots in the previously existent Millennium Development Goals, the so-called MDGs. They have introduced, however, some important innovation features. First of all, the SDGs do not focus only or predominantly on economic growth and poverty reduction. They also embrace the other two elements of sustainable development that are social and environmental sustainability. 
the second uh, innovation feature is that they uh, consider all countries uh, equal and with equal dignity. So all uh, member countries of the United Nations have to give their contribution to the achievement of the SDGs. The third element of innovation is that the SDGs are based on a multi-stakeholder approach involving not only governments but also civil society, the private sector and single individuals. So that is what the, uh, the expert says about it. And I think uh, IFLA uh, should get the credits for putting it, uh, the topic on the agenda for the libraries and um, ask libraries to share their experiences in uh, the Ablida uh, library map of, uh, sorry, the IFLA library map of the world. Um, Ablida starting, uh, started um, uh, two years ago uh, with an approach that is European, that is policy oriented and we try to make it also measurable so that's where we are talking about and we think that it's important to inspire one another with uh, storytelling but we also need to impact society and follow uh, policies um, so we um we, we think that it's important to create this measurement. And again, we ask uh, Ambassador Stephanie what he thinks about the impact on uh, society and how, this, uh, how important this is. It is indeed a very complex and articulated architecture which has taken a few years to be conceived within the UN. Uh, it's not only the 17 major goals, it's also about the uh, 169 targets and the 232 indicators. It's, uh, every, it's very well conceived, very well uh, structured and uh, basically it maps out all that is needed for humankind to achieve sustainable development. And uh, it's not only about the contents of the agenda, it's also about the process of monitoring the implementation of the agenda. Uh, when the agenda was adopted, um, a new body was created, the High Level Political Forum, and it was entrusted with the function of monitoring the implementation of the single 17 Sustainable Development Goals. And last year in New York, there was uh, the first summit dedicated to the SDGs, which uh, took stock of the progress achieved so far and also renewed the uh, political commitment of member states to implement this agenda. So what has Eblida done on, on this uh, topic? I think our most recent achievements is that in May and June 2020, we published three reports um, that are connected and they are brought in what we call the Eblida Sustainability House. And that is one, uh, a European agenda for the post-COVID-19 age. Uh, the second is a European uh, structural uh, investment funds 2021-2027. Uh, Giuseppe is going to talk about that later and it gives the funding opportunities for libraries. And then uh, the report uh, on sustainable development goals. And these three reports were gathered together in the Think the Unthinkable report we present today because we think it was a bit too much to have all these separate to you. But we are also delivering a report on uh, the uh, uh, work of the ELSA Working Group of Eblida, that is the European Libraries and Sustainability Assessment Group. So that is the group that is researching how we can measure the impact of what we uh, do. So let's get now to the um, um, Eblida um, Sustainability House. 
and here is my slideshow. Um, the Eblida SDG European House. And actually what we did is create the Eblida uh, matrix. I think I started, I have to get back, sorry. I have to start at the real start. Here we are. Um, so let us start by the 2030 agenda, which is a European agenda and which is probably the best organized, structured uh, and funded agenda connected to the sustainable development goals. And if you are not yet embarking on the SDGs, you might uh, hear four false myths uh, about SDG-oriented library projects. And that is that they do not fall within the library's core mission. I already tried to explain in my introduction, that isn't true. Whatever libraries stand for in a well-informed democratic society, it is connected to many of the SDGs. Um, another thing is libraries are not interested in environmental nature. Uh, so uh, what should libraries do with it? That is not true either. There is, as said before, in equal, equal opportunities in lifelong learning that that is really connected to what libraries do. And also um, it says, well, it, it's on small scale projects. It doesn't add much quality to it. And they are mainly for big uh, macro uh, legal and fiscal uh, policies. And also that isn't true because in the day to day life of people, people can be aware and can be informed of what is happening in their environment, can make up their mind how they want to react to that. And, uh, providing that information is a role for the library. And the core of what we did is try to find out what um, of the uh, uh, sustainable development goals and of all the sub goals that are described, um, what is now a topic where libraries are acting upon. And here is some example. Um, Fortunately, uh, it isn't true that all of the 160 plus sub goals are all uh, important for the libraries. We only have to deal with about 100. And here you see the SDG number one, no poverty. Um, there is um, uh, different uh, uh, experience in France in libraries and in the Netherlands libraries. And um, for example, uh, in uh, my library, as part of a project we do with four uh, uh, big cities in the Netherlands, we reach out to vulnerable elderly people. So we did the same as what Jean-Marie was demonstrating. We found all the 70 uh, plus people in our city during the crisis. We offered them services. We learned them how to do video calls. We provided where possible and needed with the, the infrastructure. And we, uh, uh, we, we uh, help them to develop skills to stay connected and stay informed. So um, that also helped them to be aware of what possibilities there were in the city, in government regulations, in additional funding, to fight the poverty situation they were in. Um, zero hunger is uh, the second SDG. Uh, there are in Serbia and Romania projects conducted by libraries to inform them on better quality of agricultural development so they can have bigger crops and harvests and that helps to fight hunger. Good health and well-being, another one. Um, there is uh, different projects in different countries, as you can see here. And um, what um, we uh, try to do is 
connect the SDG with a good example of what libraries do and also with policies. So um, it's up to you to see what on a national level and maybe also on an, uh, a local level, what kind of policies on poverty, on um, people being more empowered, on digital skills, etc., are available and where you connect with your library. So it's not only that you deal with the possibilities of funding by the European structural funds, but also have a look on what's happening nearby on the national and local level. Um, now, these, um, these are examples of uh, other um, um, sustainable development goals. Uh, gender uh, equality uh, is a, a very important topic. No discrimination is something libraries should be working for in every country. And uh, of course, when it comes to uh, SDG 6, clean water, um, we can help to inform uh, the, the community to be more aware uh, by cooperating with partners that have campaigns, that have exhibitions. Um, so there's different um, uh, possibilities for libraries and some are more close and others are a bit further away. Um, of course, digital literacy, which is a huge topic also in the European agenda, is um, a great uh, opportunity for libraries. Um, here it says uh, SDGs 13, 14 and 15, but healthy urban living, sustainable development of cities is also something where the library with presentations, lectures and debates can help and contribute. Now, the um, indicators are uh, important. Um, it was mentioned by uh, Ambassador Stefania that they do the work on the global level. Um, what we try to do as a Blida is create the um, outcome measurements and the output measurements for libraries. And of course, outcomes are better uh, to demonstrate, but also more difficult to demonstrate. So that is where the work of the ELSA working group is on. Um, <coughs> and this is when you go to our website, what you see the SDG um, um, European uh, house um, with here the matrix. And if you click on it, you will find the matrix, sorry, uh, the matrix as uh, I just mentioned uh, to you. So thank you for your attention and I hope you will find your way to our website and uh, get informed about what possibilities are to uh, create really effective uh, and successful uh, activities on SDGs that were performed by other libraries already and where you can learn from. So thank you very much. Um, I see there are no questions uh, yet. I see that uh, Eleanor from France was one of the people who would have raised her hand when I asked who was already three years ago working on SDGs. So that is great. Um, and it's good to learn from early adapters, I would say. So if there are no questions at this moment, I'd like to continue and give the floor to Giuseppe Vicello. Giuseppe, are you with us? I am, I am. Uh, I'm just uh, here I am. <laughs> You're just <laughs> starting. And you will have the wonderful role that if libraries get inspired about working on the SDGs, um, they they might run into a question about money and uh, you can tell us all about how SDGs are connected to European structural funds, aren't you? 
Yeah, that's uh, that's a hard task because uh, when you speak about money, you must speak about administration, and this is a very very boring topic. But however, oh. it is also my role. <laughs> you go ahead. About that. <laughs> and sorry, I prepared some slides, and uh, here they are. Okay, uh, you may have seen that. Uh, that that. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. You may have seen uh, that the, this uh, report, Think the Unthinkable, incidentally, Think the Unthinkable is uh, a, a statement that was made by a former Minister of Work, of Employment, and uh, also now the spokesperson of one of the most important uh, uh, associations in committed uh, to sustainable development. And they work uh, within the framework of uh, the SDG Watch, which is uh, uh, one of the European monetary agendas on uh, SDGs. Sorry, that was just a, a parenthesis. So there is a, a, an inspiring, let's say, title, but there is also a very, very long subtitle, which says uh, a post-COVID library agenda. And this we can understand. I mean, we are now living through the, the, the COVID crisis. And uh, we hope uh, we will come at the end of the tunnel, but uh, it's, we are not yet there. But there will be a post-COVID library agenda, and uh, which is meeting sustainable development goals in European libraries. And this must be also the task of uh, EBLIDA, let's say, to design, to encourage a new vision for libraries in Europe. And then uh, you came uh, to, this, uh, uh, to this statement funded through European Structural and Investment Funds 2021-2027. And you may wonder uh, why this? I mean, uh, does Eblida have a special access uh, to this fund? Unfortunately, it's not the case, as you can imagine. But you, you may have a special access to that. And why? Because uh, these funds are uh, quite interesting. Uh, it's, uh, you know, when I was at the, uh, I worked for the European Commission two years. And uh, uh, there was this, uh, uh, I remember, that was the mantra, you say, if you go to the cultural directorates, you have programs in the order of 1,000 euros. If you go to the technological directorates, you have programs in the order of a million euros. And if you go to the structural funds, you have programs in the order of a billion euros. That was, uh, let's say, the mantra. And so this is why... At that time, uh, I was exactly doing that. That means uh, to create a liaison between uh, several programs and uh, the European Structural Investment Funds. But uh, it was a very, very hard task. And why? Because uh, there is this idea of structural funds. And this idea was, uh, uh, let's say, like 20 years ago, that uh, structural funds are uh, uh, more for hard infrastructure. And therefore, it's also hard money, billion euro, because you have to build up a railway corridors, you have to build up motorways, train stations, broadband infrastructure. So it's a big, big, big operations, let's say. Uh, and this is true. I mean, it's still this. I mean, this is still the main objective of structural funds. Nevertheless, uh, like um, let's say 15, 20 years ago. Uh, and unfortunately, they had already left the European Commission. There was uh, this idea that beyond the infrastructure, there must be human beings. And if you want to have a good return on your investment you have made, you must, uh, you must call for services, for activities that run on this infrastructure. And that was uh, uh, then here come a... a a different attention, which was put on, of course, on small and medium enterprise. Before it was only the, mat the issue of uh, large, large enterprises. And now uh, it's about small and medium enterprises. It's about uh, also actors and also cultural actors. So everything that may encourage tourism, the circulation of ideas and in person. Unfortunately, now we cannot do that, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll be be doing this uh, once the crisis is over. There is another, I would say, half-truth about uh, structural funds. 
that they are uh, uh, only for uh, regions lagging behind. And, uh, and th this is true. I mean, when uh, Spain, Fran uh, Greece and uh, Portugal joined the European Union in the last quarter, quarter of uh, the 20th century, they, uh, they used uh, intensively these funds. When uh, Eastern European countries uh, in 2004, they joined the European Union, they were also, they benefited a lot from these funds. And uh, it's still the case for uh, southern Italy, for uh, some regions in Spain, several regions also, of course, in Germany. But it's not always the case, because uh, um, in all countries, there are regions, in all countries, there are regions of uh, uh, the, where there is an industrial decline, where there is a need to reconvert, to restructure. And what uh, really is important is to understand the, the social economic uh, um, outlook of your country region, country area, and uh, try to build upon this. And uh, that's where libraries may get in. I mean, uh, to try to take, as we say in Italia, to take the train together along with this uh, reconversion, with this uh, uh, restructuring of uh, local areas. Uh, so, and this is not not true. I mean, the fact that uh, uh, structural funds are only for uh, uh, less developed region, this is not uh, true also because now there is a need to reconvert everything in Europe. You have seen that, uh, I mean, uh, this year has been uh, really fundamental. There's been a uh, total, total reshuffle of the European architecture. It's not only about uh, sure about uh, the EU, EU next generation and all these funds, but it's a, a, about this total reorientation of the European Union uh, uh, funds. The fact that now the European Union has put really sustainable development at the core of their agenda. And if the European Union has put uh, SDGs at the core of their agenda, why libraries shouldn't do that? The sorry. So we have gone. We we are going through a, a crisis. But already, what we found during these uh, hard times was that uh, uh, there were two special aspects of the li of libraries that emerged. The first is uh, what I would call the social inclusive library. The fact that the libraries are uh, providing uh, lifelong learning, uh, research, innovation, active citizenry. And uh, even if uh, it is not uh, so apparent, perhaps to you, but the fact that libraries during the COVID crisis provided health services, um, social services to elderly, to vulnerable people, well, that was very, very important. It is a, one aspect of the library that was encouraged, to, that was really facilitated during the COVID crisis. And this is a, certainly to remain as a core business of the library. And of course, of course, there was a digital library. I mean, the digital library boomed during the COVID crisis. It was more the fact of public libraries than university libraries. And why? Because university libraries have been dealing with the digital resources for many, many years. So if there were, if there were an increase, it was in the, in the order of uh, 20, 30 percent. But for public libraries, it was really a, a revolution. And so many libra public libraries were, uh, um, were uh, able to provide the new services. And I would like to answer uh, one of the questions that was raised. I don't know whether uh, Gert Leben, if I remember well, is still there. He was, uh, talking about, he was asking about uh, uh, e-lending. Well, this is really a core issue that we, that the library will be dealing because if we want to, uh, uh, to fill the digital divide, if we want to fill the gap, if we want to uh, improve digital library services, we have to deal with copyright. And how? Especially we have to deal with copyright, taking uh, uh, some practices that are uh, uh, now current and uh, also try to build upon new practices that uh, may perhaps concern uh, local development. I really believe that uh, once now the storm is gone, you know that uh, last year, 2019, we had uh, 
uh, a copyright directive was approved, it is now time for local projects, for uh, local uh, for uh, lo- local development of uh, digital libraries, and there they may find uh, uh, applications of uh, copyright where there is no, let's say, a single or a unique uh, approach, but there are uh, locally developed approaches in the ter- in terms of uh, guidelines or in terms of uh, uh, good practices, best practices. Sorry, that was uh, not planned. I mean, it was not part of the meeting, but I wanted to answer uh, the very good question that was asked by Gert. Uh, now we are going a little bit into the administrative uh, part, uh, so I'm afraid that I'm uh, uh, going to be a little bit boring because I have to tell you what is a, a structural fund. And uh, I say what is, but in fact, I should say what are the structural funds because uh, they include a wide range, a wide packages of uh, a package of funds. Uh, but I would say that the two funds that are relevant for libraries are two. The first is the European Regional Development Fund, and this is for smart growth, green economy, connectivity, social issues, local development. And when I say that, you think, uh, well, is it uh, for less, uh, for lagging behind regions? Is it for uh, for which regions is this? I w- I'm afraid to say that this is only for all regions in Europe, because in all regions, there must be a restructuring. Some people uh, like thinking, for instance, that Nordic countries, you know, are the good, uh, the good example in Europe, uh, because they are very advanced in uh, sustainable development. They have uh, developed uh, uh, in terms of uh, circular economy or good practices about that. And this is true. But at the same time, just think that the Nordic, uh, Nordic countries are also those, together with the United States and other regions, where there is a, a, where the footprint, the carbon footprint per person is the highest in the world. So on the one hand, there are good practices, but on the, on the other hand, there are bad styles of life. And this is, again, since sustainable development is the business of uh, lifestyles, this is also where libraries can uh, be included. And since uh, there is a general, uh, really, restructuring of all uh, um, of the economy, then this is uh, definitely these funds, the European Regional Development Fund, are not for lagging behind regions, but for all countries in, uh, in, in Europe. The second fund, which is relevant for library, is the European Social Fund Plus. A, fl- a fund that is going to be even more important in the next years, from 2021, from 2021 to 2027. We are talking about, you know, the next step, the fact that uh, everything will start from January 2021. And so far, there is no budget that has been approved for the whole European Union. So it's something that takes time. But exactly because we are not yet there, this is the time to prepare your ideas, to prepare your projects. And uh, uh, this fund, the European Social Fund, is the main instrument uh, uh, in Europe to fight unemployment. And uh, it's, as I said, it's going to be even more important because there will be a lot of restructuring after the uh, COVID crisis. It has also included some funds like the Fund for Aid uh, to the Most Deprived. And uh, these were funds that were, have been used actually by libraries. But uh, uh, this time they want file applications to the European Commission, but to national states. And why this? There is a a special aspect in these uh, funds, in the European uh, Union Structural Investment Funds. It is a special architecture. Why? Because, uh, in fact, it's money that is given from member states to the European Commission, and then the European Commission gives back this money to member states in order to uh, for uh, in order to create cohesion, so cohesion between uh, le- uh, regions lagging behind the uh, most more advanced regions, and also to create uh, a, a, an economy which is progressing towards the main European Union priorities. So it is an architecture, and uh, uh, I find uh, it's quite uh, it's quite uh, funny because. Uh, There are a lot of libraries that say, oh, we have to apply to file applications for European funds. And these European funds are, of course, something, uh, it's a big box in Brussels. And sometimes this box is very small. 
it's in the order of a thousand euro that's true whereas uh, the big really the big money is at the local level we through these uh, structural funds and uh, perhaps uh, the uh, sometimes you have better to call uh, your neighbor instead of uh, someone in brussels so there are uh, five uh, general objectives in the european structural funds So, and these objectives are uh, those uh, that uh, they coincide avec, uh, with uh, the, the objectives of the European Commission work. I mean, all programs, all programs of the European Commission now must comply with these uh, general objectives. A smarter Europe, so innovation, digitization, economic transformation, and uh, uh, then a greener, carbon-free Europe, a more connected Europe, strategic uh, so greener carbon free is practically the application the implementation of the paris agreement on climate change uh, a more connected europe so this is more for strategic transport and digital networks not very linked uh, uh, with library work but the fourth objective is very much linked because uh, it's a more social europe it is the very first time that the european pillar of social rights will be implemented uh, nations civil society has been discussing about uh, the the social rights the european this european pillar for years and years and now it's the first time that uh, it is implemented and that's really the european union response to those who say oh there are only eurocrats who only think of uh, you know big banks big money and then a europe closer to citizens so uh, concerning locally led development uh, strategy and uh, sustainable urban development uh, these these are all all uh, very important objectives for libraries and uh, when we go from uh, the general objective and sorry for this administration but i think it's useful sorry i don't understand ah. when we go to these uh, general objectives When we go from general objectives to specific objectives, we find out that uh, 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 the matter is even more precise. The, the scope for libraries is even better defined. What we have uh, done, we have done a very a, a boring, uh, perhaps administrative uh, work in the Think the Unthinkable uh, report. But I think for those who want to file projects, uh, structural funds projects, this work may be very, very useful. Why? Because uh, we have uh, created like simulations. Huh? We have seen, uh, look, there is a specific uh, structural fund objective. So these are, for instance, the specific objectives of uh, um, EIA, uh, European Development Regional Fund objective number four. So there are four specific objectives. To each of them, we have associated the SDGs, the uh, uh, SDGs, where there may be potential projects um, which uh, match this uh, uh, specific objective of structural fund. And uh, in the third column, we have, create, we have put a list of uh, stories and uh, the fact that uh, of uh, projects, projects that are not, not only stories, I and mean, actually they are fully fledged projects, projects that may be influential, that may be part of uh, a policy, of a sustainable development policy in uh, European libraries. So by doing this exercise of simulation, if you wish, you can uh, recreate these tables at local level, at national level. And in fact, uh, the aim of these uh, uh, European, uh, Europe-wide seminars is exactly to inspire national workshops. If you put the specific objective in your country with this SDG, and you may add Uh, possible projects in your uh, uh, in your country then you find out that uh, there may be a table which may be a, a very interesting for your administrators for policy makers and for politicians and uh, you see that it's not only about uh, these uh, sustainable development goals but if you go to uh, objective number five general objective number five you find uh, different sdgs and this is also a, a, an answer to those who think that uh, sdgs are only for certain goals of course sdg4 which is about uh, quality education is uh, 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 is an sdg which meets 
exactly the scope of libraries. But in fact, what we found out in our first European report on sustainable development is that all SDGs, all may be relevant, including those SDGs like, uh, let's say, life below the water or uh, life on land. Um, and why this? Because uh, uh, we have seen in Denmark, for instance, you can create citizens' projects, I mean, uh, collaboration between university libraries and public libraries. So there are plenty of ideas, actually, and there are, and all these are the possible, the potential sources of money. Then... Uh, I would, uh, I would like, or now imagine that you are uh, on your desk, that I convinced you eh, that uh, I said, uh, yes, I think uh, there, are there, there is there a very good opportunity for my library. I want to do something. So now, where shall I start from? Well, the very first thing I would suggest you is uh, to look for the national or the regional authority that is managing uh, the European, uh, the, the structural funds. There is a very good web page, and uh, here is the address. But you, if you just type on Google structural funds, national authorities or uh, authorities, managing authorities, then you find exactly this, the, the same table. And uh, country per ca every country, there is a list of the managing authorities. And you may find out actually that our authorities which you will be dealing uh, with uh, every day in your uh, daily work. Then uh, uh, another thing uh, that uh, I would like to suggest you is uh, to uh, see whether there are uh, whether uh, the structural funds have already been approved in your country. And I can tell you already the answer. The answer is no, not yet. But all plans have been prepared. Uh, if there is no structural funds that was uh, approved, it's just because... Uh, with all these uh, new plans and uh, next generation and all this, uh, there has not been uh, uh, there has not been uh, the final approval of the European uh, budget, which also includes the European Commission budget. So the, there is, these funds have not been approved, but definitely all plans to implement these funds have already been uh, uh, discussed. And this is why I think uh, this is the right time because you can see either. Where, uh, if you can have uh, a slot, let's say, in these uh, funds, or also, I mean, if you can exert influence and say, well, uh, if you want to uh, to deal with the culture and sustainable development, li uh, libraries are the very first place you should uh, 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 telephone. Uh, then uh, uh, another thing I would uh, suggest is uh, to see whether there are there are libraries that have already uh, used structural funds and uh, you find some of them in the uh, think the unthinkable uh, report but the long version there are four versions as uh, Jean-Marie explained and then also what are and this is also important what are the smart specialization strategies at national and local level you know you know that European Union likes uh, uh, euro vocabulary and uh, you may ask me, what is a smart specialization strategy? Well, it's exactly the strategy that a local development or a regional development, your managing authority or the managing authority of structural funds has chosen in order to redevelop, to reconvert, restructure, redevelop or develop further the economy and the, the social uh, structure and the, the local economy in your country. Then, uh, then uh, you say, okay, I had uh, an external uh, visit to all these people. So I know now that uh, who is my managing authority, who is my contact person. I know uh, and where the money can come from. Now I know uh, what are, uh, what what is uh, really the, 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 the local uh, uh, development strategy, the strategy for local development. Now I want to, to write, to draft the real project. So what, shall you, what will you do? Well, for this, we have created a series of tools, and the very first is the EBITDA matrix, and Ton has already expanded on, do, on that. And uh, uh, then, uh, then, of course, if you are working uh, together with the health policy in the sector of health policies, in citizen science projects, you want to know what is the general policy of the European Union. You find also there 
a, um, an information uh, more than in Think the Unthinkable report in the Ablida Matrix. The Ablida Matrix is really the, 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 the page where we have collected all kinds of information about SDGs and about also opportunities for funding. And uh, then I would also address uh, the library at entity uh, in your country which can advise you about SDG policies and indicators. And these, uh, these uh, library entities uh, do exist in many countries. In France, for instance, there is an excellent uh, uh, board body that is coordinating all activities on uh, SDGs. This is the same in Spain. One is, uh, uh, thanks also to Eblida, one is uh, getting, uh, is uh, maturing up uh, in exactly these days. Uh, Netherlands, I mean, in uh, all countries, more or less, there are some library entities that are informed about SDG development, and they may advise you. And of course, if you don't find anybody, just come back to me, and I will send you information either about the library entity or uh, what can be the, the, the strategy that you can develop in your country, especially if it is linked with uh, uh, this uh, money opportunity. And... Uh, Another thing, and this is exactly the work that Eblida can do for you. We can uh, bring uh, experiences that have been beneficial for, uh, that may be beneficial for uh, uh, your project. We can tell you what, uh, what are the SDG-oriented library projects that uh, are similar to yours, so that you can take example. You can also uh, start uh, building up kind of uh, evaluation or self-evaluation of your proposal. This is very important because, uh, uh, as Ambassador Stefanile said, uh, there, is a, there are entities that are monitoring uh, the progress of sustainable development in each country. And uh, you may find out, as it is already the case in some libraries, that uh, uh, your, uh, your boss or your uh, mayor may come uh, to see you and say, well, uh, uh, give me a budget. In, and do you show me how you are complying with the sustainable development standards? And what will you do? Well, uh, you may ask a bleed that we are working on that. And uh, uh, definitely one of the things we should be busy this year is uh, to find how uh, library budgets can be SDG compliant. And, uh, oops, sorry. And uh, we are very happy that uh, the executive committee uh, approved the transformation of what used to be a working group, so with a lower status, uh, which was working on uh, library uh, and uh, sustainability assessment. The executive committee just last week approved uh, its transformation into uh, the ELSIA, which deals with uh, library implementation and assessment of uh, uh, sustainability. And so it's going to be an expert group, and it is chaired by Alicia Celes Caro, who is the president of the uh, Spanish Library Associations. And uh, we have already a set of experts that have been designated by our uh, uh, members. So I would like just to remind you, and uh, uh, sorry for that, but I go to the very first uh, slide, that the Think the Unthinkable report is produced in uh, four versions. And uh, since we are talking uh, uh, practically, practical, uh, I would suggest you to use the long version for reference purposes, to use the short version if you have to, uh, to raise advocacy, because if you meet a politician, you don't want to give him a book or her a book, but you want to, uh, to have a, a, a short version, which can also be the summary tables, but the summary tables uh, may be used more at administrative level. That means if you are going to draft, to file applications or to draft projects, then it's good to pick up statements or sentences. And this is why we created this uh, special version of the Think the Unthinkable report. And finally, we have an infographic. This infographic uh, um, is uh, definitely for advocacy. Uh, we met uh, last week a uh, city councillor, and I must say that uh, the whole documentation of uh, we presented there, there were uh, three, two versions of the report and several other documents. She only looked at the infographic, these two pages, which uh, summarized all information. 
So that's the end of my presentation. I hope that it was not too boring, but uh, it's always the case if you want to deal with money, as you know. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Giuseppe. Someone has to do it, and you did it. So thank you for that. And um, you mentioned that the budgets in Europe are not yet um, decided upon. Um, we learned from one of the European, uh, the members of the European Parliament, that a big discussion there is uh, if the money should be uh, available for countries where democracy is at stake. So it's for a good reason, I think, there is a delay and um, we hope it will be concluded uh, soon. So are there any questions for, um, for Giuseppe? Um, I don't see them yet in the chat. He, well, Jean-Marie reminds us that um, um, Giuseppe kindly offered uh, that if you have any questions, you can approach him, call him or mail him. And also, if you want to have um, a conference or a meeting uh, on uh, this topic uh, in your own country, um, and Giuseppe mentioned already some of the countries where this is uh, already being organized, but if you want to do it in your country, please approach him and we will be glad to help you. Uh, if I may say, I mean, we are, we are, we are organizing a meeting. Uh, um, uh, actually, this morning there was a meeting uh, uh, in Italy, which was not uh, really a national seminar, but it was a kind of kickoff meeting uh, just to think uh, how uh, these uh, how sustain how libraries can uh, develop a distinct and thinkable strategy uh, then uh, there will be a meeting uh, in uh, France at the end of November on 2nd November we are having a meeting in the Netherlands then uh, there are meetings that are being planned now in Spain and of course as everything uh, goes online as you can imagine then uh, uh, you can organize uh, national workshops in your country, and if you want advice, please do not hesitate to, to write to me. Okay, thank you. Well, um, I think it's up to me to wrap up and um, um, we come to an end of this, uh, this workshop. Um, if you have questions you forgot to ask, you are more than welcome, as said before, to uh, uh, send them to us and I'm not going into detail on everything that is said uh, during this uh, this webinar but we learned that uh, libraries in Europe were faced with different rules and different situations in different countries but they all uh, reacted with great creativity and flexibility to that and um, if you look what, what is happening and what is bringing us to the future, Jean-Marie addressed us saying there are um, on the social uh, aspect, on the technological aspect and on the governmental aspect, there are uh, changes created by this COVID crisis that will stay with us and where we have to work on in the future. And in more detail, you can find the, the different aspects on the uh, on the website. So um, then we um, discussed SDGs, um, how they are connected to the core values of libraries and also what we can do um, and how we are working um, to work on, on impact measurement of these uh, SDGs in libraries because we have to show to the politicians, to the world, what the effect of our work is. And to be able to do so, Giuseppe mentioned mainly two structural funds, the regional uh, development funds and the uh, social funds plus, which are uh, hopefully in, in, in line soon so that we can see how we can uh, have proposals for that. And if you want ideas for that in the Oblida matrix, you find the examples of libraries who had been working uh, on that. So I would say with this 
a, a webinar, we try to, uh, well, present Eblida as a platform of exchange of information and, uh, well, maybe next time also a bit more interaction with you. Um, I would like to, uh, to invite you to think the unthinkable, um, let your mind go, what might be an opportunity in your situation and make plans for that. And don't forget, um, even if you're on the right track, you will get run over if you just keep sitting there. So not only make plans, but also act to it. We can do it. We are librarians. Thank you. Have a wonderful weekend and hope to see you soon.